You all must be aware of the term chemical reaction. It is a process that involves the rearrangement of the molecular or ionic structure of a substance as distinct from a change in its physical form or a nuclear reaction. The activity that you have performed today deals with this, a chemical reaction. It is basically a reaction which gives rise to new substances. These new substances are completely different from the original ones. For example, the chemicals that you mix today are sodium hydroxide and ammonium chloride to get sodium chloride and ammonia gas, as well as water. It is this gas that yields a strong smell. Ammonia is a colorless gas with a pungent smell. Please be very careful while doing this experiment as both the chemicals involved may be toxic and should not be ingested or be in contact with your skin for a prolonged period. It's advisable if an adult is present while you conduct this activity. There are two types of changes, chemical change and physical change. Physical changes can be defined as changes affecting the form of a substance but not its chemical composition. This is in contrast with the concept of chemical change in which the composition of a substance changes or one or more substances combine or break up to form new substances. In general, a physical change is reversible using physical means. For example, salt dissolved in water can be recovered by allowing the water to evaporate. Same goes for ice. You can convert it back into water. Physical changes involve change in physical properties. For example, when water freezes, it forms ice, and ice melts down to form water at normal temperatures. We will not go into the details of physical changes. That is dealt with in several other of our topic guides, for example, physical change water. In this guide, our experiment and focus will be on chemical changes and reactions. There are various kinds of chemical reactions. Broadly, they can be categorized as those where heat is released or where it is absorbed. These are called exothermic and endothermic reactions respectively. Note that there are physical changes too that can be endothermic or exothermic. Chemical reactions can also be more finely classified as precipitation or double displacement reactions, single displacement reactions, acid base or neutralization reactions, oxidation reduction reactions or redox reactions, synthesis reactions, decomposition reactions, and combustion reactions. Neutralization reactions are a subset of double displacement reactions, and in each of these reactions there could be some examples that are exothermic and some endothermic. Now the activity you performed is an endothermic reaction. I'm sure you did not feel the container to be hot after mixing the chemicals, did you? This is because your experiment did not release any heat, but in fact absorbed heat from the surroundings for the reaction to occur. But before going into the details of the reaction, we better talk a little bit about ions. You may have heard of these terms, but all the same, let's talk a little bit about them here. So what are ions? An ion is an atom or a molecule with a non-zero net electric charge, that is, its total number of electrons is not equal to the total number of protons. A positively charged ion is called a cation, the number of protons is more than the electrons, while a negatively charged ion is called an anion, where the number of electrons is more than the number of protons. Because of their opposite electric charges, the anions and the cations attract each other and bond strongly to form ionic compounds such as salts. Ions can be created by chemical means like dissolution of salts into water or by physical means, for example, by passing direct current through a conducting solution. The term ion was coined by the great English physicist Michael Faraday in the year 1834. How do these ions get exchanged in a reaction or how do ions from one substance get exchanged with other substances when they are both mixed? This process is known as ion exchange. For example, when table salt is mixed in water, it dissolves completely. This happens because the ions from the salt are freed to a considerable extent from the restraints that hold them within the rigid array of the crystal, and they move about in the water with relative freedom. Now coming back to the main topic about your experiment, reaction between sodium hydroxide and ammonium chloride. This is an endothermic reaction where heat is not produced but is rather used for the reaction to take place. This reaction also happens to be an example of a double displacement reaction. 
and it is a reaction that has a couple of strong physical characteristics as well. You get to smell the strong, pungent, repulsive odor of ammonia. Does this remind you of the smell of something else? Shouldn't be too difficult to think of in India. We are encountered by this unpleasantness at many a street corner and public toilet. And two relatively powdery dry salts seem to become a wet paste after reacting. All the chemical reactions include both the breaking of existing bonds and creating new bonds. A reaction to break a bond always requires energy, so this type of reaction is called an endothermic process. The thumb rule is, when chemical bonds are broken, heat is used up or absorbed, and when new bonds are formed, heat is released. By nature, molecules want to stay together, so the formation of chemical bonds between molecules requires less energy as compared to breaking the bonds between molecules, which require more energy, and results in heat being absorbed from the surrounding atmosphere. However, endothermic and exothermic reactions are also interconnected. A very nice example is the change in the forms of water. So here we are going to a physical change example. You may look at this diagram to make you understand better. Bonds between water molecules need to break when going from the solid, which is ice, to liquid water and from liquid to gaseous vapor state. We know that breaking bonds require energy, hence this is an endothermic process. Whereas going from the gaseous state to the liquid, as well as from liquid to the solid state, will release energy to build up the bonds between the water molecules. Hence, this is an exothermic process. Note that we aren't using the word reaction because this is a physical change and no chemical reaction is involved. A few examples of endothermic reactions are photosynthesis, preparing an omelet or for that matter any sort of cooking because heat from the pan gets transferred to the food you're preparing and chemically changes the food to become something new and tasty. And of course the experiment that you just performed. The experiment you conducted also had the following chemical aspect as alluded to earlier. It happens to be a double displacement reaction. Double displacement reactions are defined as the chemical reactions in which one component each of both the reacting molecules is exchanged to form the products. During this reaction, the cations and anions of two different compounds switch places, forming two entirely different compounds. The pattern of a double displacement reaction can easily be explained as follows. This is essentially a swapping of cations and anions. The solvent for the double displacement reaction is usually water and the reactants and the products are usually ionic compounds or acids or bases. Double displacement reactions can be further classified as neutralization reactions and precipitation reactions. Neutralization reactions are specific types of reactions. When an acid reacts with a particular amount of base, which results in the formation of a salt and water, you may get a neutral solution if the salt formed is neutral in nature. An example of this is as follows, that is HCl plus NaOH to give you NaCl and HGO. That is hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide giving you common salt and water. Water is always formed as a product of an aqueous neutralization reaction. The reactants are an acid and a base. You may also go to our Tactivity and Topic Guide titled Acid-Base Reaction for more experiments and information regarding these types of reactions. Precipitation reaction happens when two aqueous ionic compounds combine to form at least one non-soluble ionic compound. The insoluble compound is known as the precipitate. The solvent and the soluble components are called the supernate or supernatant. An example of such a reaction could be Silver nitrate and sodium chloride to give silver chloride and sodium nitrate. Here you'll notice that silver nitrate is in the aqueous form as well as the sodium chloride, whereas silver chloride gets precipitated as a solid and sodium nitrate remains in solution. You may also go to our Tactivity and Topic Guide titled Precipitation Reaction for more experiments and information regarding these types of reactions. In the case of our experiment, the reaction is as follows. That is sodium hydroxide plus ammonium chloride, both in the solid form, becomes sodium chloride in aqueous solution because water is formed here and ammonia gas is released.
Looking at the reaction, can you tell why two dry reactants become wet and pasty? You may try various reactions at home or those suggested in the variations guide for this activity to try different examples of endothermic neutralization and double displacement reactions. Some reactions like the following also produce a gas like in the experiment you have just conducted. So this is another example of a double displacement reaction which can be conducted easily at home by mixing baking soda which is nothing but sodium bicarbonate and vinegar which is mostly acetic acid. This produces sodium acetate and carbonic acid. While doing this experiment, you will notice that there is a lot of fizz after the reaction occurs. This is because this neutralization reaction is a gas producing reaction where carbonic acid decomposes into carbon dioxide, forming the bubbles and the fizz, and of course water. Some scientific terms. A nuclear reaction, this is the process in which two nuclei or nuclear particles collide to produce different products than the initial particles. So they form a new nucleus or a new element. This is the process that occurs, for example, in stars in nuclear fusion. Electrons are a stable subatomic particle with a charge of negative found in all atoms and acting as a primary carrier of electricity in solids. Protons are a stable subatomic particle occurring in all atomic nuclei with a positive electric charge equal in magnitude to that of an electron. Dissolution is the action or process of dissolving or being dissolved. A conducting solution is a substance that dissociates into ions in a solution like water acquires the capacity to conduct electricity when a salt is dissolved in it. A group of atoms bonded together is called a molecule, representing the smallest fundamental unit of a chemical compound that can take part in a chemical reaction. And a refrigerant is a substance used for refrigeration. You must be wondering about the smell that comes from your product. That smell is the characteristic smell of ammonia. Ammonia is a compound of nitrogen and hydrogen, which has a chemical formula NH3. It is a colorless gas and has a pungent smell. It is a common nitrogenous waste, especially among the aquatic organisms, and also contributes significantly to be a part of fertilizers and foods for terrestrial organisms. It is also an ingredient in a variety of pharmaceutical products and cleaning products too. In spite of its uses, ammonia has been classified as a very hazardous gas in its concentrated form. Some plants rely on ammonia and other nitrogenous wastes incorporated into the soil by decaying matter. Ammonia also plays a role in both normal and abnormal animal physiology. It is biosynthesized through normal amino acid metabolism and is toxic in high concentrations. The liver converts ammonia to urea through a series of reactions known as the urea cycle and this is eventually passed in urine giving it its distinct ammonia-like smell. Now you know why it is so ubiquitous in India. Liver dysfunction, such as that seen in cirrhosis, may lead to elevated amounts of ammonia in the blood known as hyperammonia. As mentioned above, ammonia is used in fertilizers, either in the form of salts or solutions. When it is mixed with soil, it leads to a very good yield of crops like maize and wheat. Nitric acid, a derivative of ammonia, is used hugely in the production of explosives, for example. Household cleaners also contain nitric acid dissolved in water in the form of ammonium hydroxide. Because of ammonia's vaporization properties, it is a useful refrigerant. Liquid ammonia is used for treatment of cotton and other fabrics. In particular, it is used for pre-washing of wool before being made into sweaters and warmers. We hope you have by now got a clear idea about ammonia and its effects, endothermic reactions, double displacement reactions, and chemical reactions in general. Chemistry is all around you all the time, and unbeknownst to you is playing a crucial role in the functioning of living and non-living cycles all over the universe, from the smallest cell in a biological system to star and planet formation in interstellar space. We hope you had fun playing with a couple of very simple chemicals and now get your hands dirty in trying many more similar reactions. Have fun. See you.